Okay, so I'm here with David Aldridge of NBA TV, yeah. and we've been having a little, a little discussion mm -hmm. about the Heat. I think the Heat are weak at the five position, and you seem to think it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter as long as Chris Bosh stays healthy. You know, he's their starting center now. I mean, I think the problem before was that he didn't embrace the role. He wasn't sure he wanted to be a center. But I think now he sees and understands that he can be effective playing that position. And I think he's okay with it. If he stays healthy, they're so good. They're, I just don't see how anybody can beat them. Now, if he gets hurt, they don't have a lot of depth behind him, and they're vulnerable. But if he can stay healthy and give them 70, 74 games during the regular season and give them a full run in the playoffs, I just don't see how anybody can beat him four times. They're so good defensively, and LeBron is so good at both ends of the floor right now. And I think winning the championship has unburdened him. I think now he can play loose and play kind of free and really be the player we all thought he would be because there's no more pressure on him. I just think that right now Miami, unless they have injuries, is, is very difficult to beat, almost impossible. So I personally, I, I wanted to go back to the, the draft because I had this theory since prior to that. Um, I was praying to the basketball gods. I was saying, Lord Jesus, please let Fab Mello go 22 up. Mm -hmm. And everyone said, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's going below that. I said, the Celtics will save the NBA if Fab Mello gets drafted higher than the Miami pick because they know that they have a weakness at the five. Mm -hmm. Now, Fab Mello went 22nd, as I predicted, to the Celtics. Mm -hmm. And when it came to Miami's pick, they immediately traded him away Whoa. because it wasn't a five. Or it wasn't the creep. My theory is because it wasn't because of, it wasn't because they got a cream of the crop five. Now, what is your theory on that? Because I think I'm right. <laughs> they traded the pick because they don't want to spend any more money. First round picks get guaranteed money. So you have to pay them, even if they never play for you. Miami's got a payroll well above 75, 80, approaching $80 million. With the new luxury tax that's going to kick in after this season, you're going to be paying even more money than you're paying right now, which is dollar for dollar. For every dollar you're over the luxury tax, you got to pay a dollar. That number goes up starting next season. So a team like Miami that's got a big payroll already, you've got three guys that are each making $14 million and above, that, that adds up quickly. So you're not going to, you're not going to, draft someone who A is not going to play and B is going to cost you even more money than you're already paying in payroll. That's why they traded the pick. It wasn't because you know someone wasn't there that they wanted. It was because they were going to trade the pick anyway unless there was, unless you know something crazy happened and somebody who was a top five pick fell to them then maybe they would keep the pick but when you're picking that low you'll, and you know I think you, you, you'll see a lot of teams trade that pick. They trade out because they don't want to pay that guaranteed money. Miami's in a different place right now. I mean, their roster is set. The rotation is set. Other than bringing in Ray Allen and Richard Lewis, they're not really going to change a lot of things in terms of who plays. So they're, 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 they're good where they are. And so they're not going to, they're certainly not going to bring in a young guy who has to learn how to play at, a, at the level they're already playing at when they're trying to win as many championships as they can right now. So I just don't think that that was a factor. I just think it was more they're trying to cut as much payroll as they can, so they don't have to pay as much luxury tax as they can. That's a good point. But having Bosch at the five now pulls him out of the 15, 17 foot range that he likes to shoot from. Don't you think that that's a negative um, aspect to moving him down to that position? No, because if you go back and look at other, if you see how they played in the finals, LeBron on the block, Bosch was up top. Bosch was at free throw line extended, top of the key, 15, 70 feet, where he likes to shoot anyway. So he was actually liberated <laughs> playing that way, and then they were, then they could, and they could also reverse it, but they could play LeBron at the top, either a one-four set or something else, and then they would post Bosch, uh, depending on the matchup. So I think Bosch actually is, it feels very comfortable playing with with LeBron and with Dwayne Wade because he never gets double teamed, no matter who he's where he is and who's he's always got single coverage, and whatever you think of Chris Bosch. He's going to beat most single coverage in the NBA. There's not many fives that can can play with 
take go out to the top of the key and guard Chris Bosh. There's not many fives that are as quick as he is down on the block. He's going to beat most fives one on one. Now, if you double him, that's different. But he's never going to be doubled when LeBron and Dwayne Wade are on the floor with him. That's the beauty of the system that they have down there. So again, if he doesn't get hurt, if he can stay healthy, and he has gotten hurt before, he got hurt last season, obviously. But if he stays healthy, he can play the five. He can flourish at the five. Think about this. How many legitimate low post back to the back centers do we have in the NBA right now? We've got Andrew Bynum, and we've got Dwight Howard. That's really about it. <laughs> you know, no, you know, Oklahoma City's not feeding Kendrick Perkins the ball 20 times down low. They don't play that way. So Chris Bosch doesn't have to guard somebody who's 30, 40 pounds bigger than him every night. It's maybe once or twice a month. Well, he can do that. They can figure out ways to scheme it so he's not guarding that guy every night. That's when maybe Joel Anthony plays a little bit more, some of their other guys. So he doesn't have to get beat up physically playing the five. The league is totally different than it was 20 years ago. They don't play inside out anymore. Okay. Seven-footers shoot three-pointers now, you know, or they handle out front. You don't see, I mean, is JaVale McGee a guy that's going to back a guy down? and shoot? No, but nobody does. To me, it's not about that. It's about clogging the lane so guards like Russell Westbrook can't just abuse the paint as, as much as they do. And to use Bosch as that, to me, is almost, I don't know, I, I just feel like it's taking away from his game. Right. Well, nobody's, I don't think anybody's asking Bosch to be a shot blocker at the rim, mm -hmm. um, to be, you know, an incredible defensive presence like Dwight Howard is at the rim. They play team defense at Miami. The whole point of Miami's defense is not to let Russell Westbrook penetrate, yeah. <laughs> to make him shoot jumpers. Again, look at the finals. How many times did he get an un unimpeded run to the basket? Very few times. He had to shoot jumpers. He was good. He made a lot of them. <laughs> but... You know they're not going to let you break them down off the dribble. They're going to slide def They're going to slide help to one side or the other. They're going to make you go base. They're going to make you stay out of the paint. They're not going to let you do the things you want to do. Miami defensively is so good, you know, and that's that's again, LeBron accepting the challenge of guarding not just the best five, not just, one through five. <laughs> he changes everything. That, the, that, that another team has to do. He takes away other team's strengths. He makes it impossible for you to double team anybody. And he's now willing, not he was always willing to pass, but now he's so good on the block that you can't just say, okay, we'll, li we'll live with him shooting 45% of the block because he's not shooting 45% of the block anymore. Right. It's a, it, it, he's, the, he's just so good, he's the best player it's not close how good he is compared to everybody else's right now. I love Kevin Durant. I love Kobe. Kobe Bryant's a great player. All of those guys, it's not close right now. LeBron's better than everybody by a ton. Okay, David. Well, well, we'll just have to see where the leaves fall throughout the season. But thank you very much for talking to me, and I'll hold you to this. Absolutely. <laughs> get, on, get on me on Twitter. I Make will sure let the world you, know that you were right wrong. Now is wrong. Exactly. Be the first time I was wrong. <laughs> All right. Thank you very one, much. One, one, one.